What? Welcome to No Prize Podcast. I'm the professor. That's Johnny. That's Lucas. What's going on, guys? Well, it looks like uh, Lucas has got his uh, he's got his Super Bowl gear on already, dude. You're, well, you're a day early. Hey, well. yeah, put it on. Um, <laughs> hey, the 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 jersey goes on when I start to drink and end a celebration, and that would be now. So, so I'll, I'll you know. I gotta... it's, you, it's you, so you tell me that jersey never comes off, right? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey I, I, if my wife st- takes it away and cleans it while I'm not paying attention, that's, that's on her. I mean, thank, thank God for the missus, right? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you that I will be rooting for the Eagles tomorrow night because really? I, I would rather not see Patrick Mahomes win another championship. Why? Just cause I don't want I don't want anybody to have more than one. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, remember the times when this, it used to be hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah check out this guy. Yeah, yeah. Just, my team shouldn't win more than one Super Bowl. Whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I'm oh. chat, I'm chatting with the Chiefs, just just to annoy Lucas more than anything. <laughs> well, uh, we'll see. We'll see. So, uh, so we've been going the last couple of months without not much to talk about, but we're kind of ramping up with um, with some MCU. With the, we have uh, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania coming out next Friday. Uh, so actually, by the time this drops, it'll be three days from now, right? And mm-hmm. then, uh, and then we have on Wednesday dropping on Disney Plus. We have uh, the first six episodes of Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. If any one of you are interested in seeing that, it looks kind of interesting. What do you is, think? It an, is it an animated thing or is it a... uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur is an animated series. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll see. Have you Marvel's done... Marvel's animation is not as not as tight as DC's. Right. I think that's I think that's a pretty much a, a given nowadays, which is surprising because in the House of Mouse controls Marvel. You think it's one thing that Disney should be able to do where there's cartoons. <laughs> Well, I, I, from what I've seen, it is very much aimed towards the kids, right? right so, yeah. um, so we'll be seeing some kind of simplistic kind of stories, probably. Um, but have you have you heard anything about it, Lucas? Have you are you uh, looking to see that? I, I am looking forward to see it. Uh, I it's exactly as you describe it that you know it's it's for the kids, and that's all we can hope for. Um, it's not. You no, know, like Marvel's What If series, right? That's that's what I would have hoped that they would have. But Lawrence Fishburne said, "Nope, it's for the kids and this, that, and the other thing." So, man, uh, I am kind of disappointed in that. I will give it another shot. I mean, no, I will give it a shot when I, when it comes up on this Plus. But I would say that for us speculators that were holding on to our first appearance copies, um, we you might want to get rid of it <laughs> before the thing actually pops out and everybody mm-hmm. makes their determination. Um, because I don't think it's going to rise up to its two thousand dollar freaking prices again. Well, speaking about Lawrence Fishburne, uh, rumor has it he's voicing the Beyonder in Moon really? Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Really? Yes. Huh. Yeah. That would be <laughs> no reactions for that. <laughs> so wasn't he already Goliath in the other Ant Man movie? In the last Ant Man movie, yes, he played mm-hmm. Bill Foster. So we have another actor that's doing double duty. So, uh, so anyway, I'm looking forward to it just because uh, we haven't seen anything on Disney Plus for a while. So, I'm looking forward to actually having the to watch something. Um, so, what about Ant Man and the Wasp? We've seen that we, we're getting High Evolutionary. We're getting Modok. 
we're introducing stature uh and i heard that nadia the second wasp is actually it being introduced in this movie too um so what do you guys think are you guys looking forward to ant-man and the wasp johnny um i can safely say that i have no love whatsoever for ant-man and the wasp in any shape way or form i've tried to watch the first one turned it off because it was pants never even bothered watching the second one because why would i do more of the same um do, i like him as as an actor paul Rudd. i think he's class in lots of different things um and i, I don't mind him in the avengers movies um and to be fair, Captain America Civil War is an Avengers movie, no matter which way you cut the dice. Um, so we can I sit through a whole more science gobbledygook, more CGI than actors? Uh, no, I don't uh, know. I don't. I, I get the CGI is a massive part of movie making nowadays, uh, but I would rather watch actors act. Um, and you know what? Build a set rather than be all computer generated thank you very much oh, so um, are you not are you not going to bother to see the new indiana jones movie that's coming out this summer um it was harrison ford harrison ford's a decent actor right well, you're <laughs> well but he, but he's cgi probably for the most most of the movie yeah is he yeah yeah what the, the the kind of music? i saw it <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, the thing is if you're using cgi to de-age your character that's still the actor acting right I don't know. I, you no, know, uh, yeah, no, no, it's because you tell no. me that that's not Harrison Ford acting. Then with it is CGI. not. It is not because that's, that's basically him just being a voice actor. You might as well just go with animation. The basic, the basis of acting is voice inflection, face inflection, and hitting the mark and putting your own um, words on top of it. They are CGIing him stuff so much that if he misses the mark when how he should look to the left or should look to the right or how he looks down to express uh, you no know, emotions, which they're going to have to do. Yeah. Right. They're going to have to do because because his look, his eighty year old foggy bottom is not going to be able to inflect like he used to. Right. Remember well, how I, he used to I be a Hollywood. I massively, I massively disagree with this. This is a guy that's <laughs> work, currently working in nineteen twenty three. You know, he's Oscar nom he's getting award nominated for this show, so don't tell me that Harrison Ford can't inflect correctly as an actor oh. in his eighties. That's just BS from the did highest he, order. Did so, he get nominated for 1923? So I read in the blurb. <coughs> so I read in the blurb. But you know, it's it, you know I just for me the bottom of the, the, the superhero movie industry has bottomed out. It, it for me personally when i go that does that mean i'm going to see batman yes i'm going to see batman because i love batman but am i going to waste my time as you know how i feel about this am i going to waste nearly three hours plus of my life watching a black panther movie no i'm not because i have no interest in black panther i have no interest in ant-man i have no interest in the wasp so no I'm not. I'll wait till it comes out on Disney Plus and I can sit and I can pause it and I can walk out and think to myself, you know what? This movie's pants and turn it off and not feel bad about the fact that I'm walking out and having to spend like however much it is to go to the cinema nowadays and have to endure a movie that I'm going to dislike. So, there you go. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, I agree with you up to a point. I think, um, I think in the prior phases that marvel mcu has done i think the movies were much more tightly interwoven and tightly connected together and here i kind of think that they're trying to make make them more standalone um you know i thought black panther really wasn't tied into most of the rest of the marvel universe shang chi was not um doctor strange would tied into wandavision a little bit but not for the most part after 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 uh avengers eternals been and this is and this is my other point this is my other point marvel you want to stay ahead of the superhero game if so you want and that's i get it you know dc are running out the big hitters this summer well you've got you've got the flash movie coming out with umpteen different batman you've got um you've got aquaman 2 everyone loves jess Momoa's aquaman you know um but even dc falling off because who gives a rat's ass about shazam you know, Marvel are now go going down the depths of the charts to see which characters. We're going to have Captain Marvel and the Marvels. 
Marvel, Marvel was a, a decisive film, divisive film to start off. Some mm. people love it, some people hate it. Um, so where'd you go? Where'd you go when you get rid of all your big, big hitters? Where'd you go when you've got no Captain America? Where'd you go when you've got no Iron Man? Where'd you go when you've got no Thor? And even if you have Thor, do you get Thor or do you get that absolute rubbish that was Love and Thunder? You know? So, I don't know. The, for me, the, the creative sides of people's brains have sort of gone, oh, we've got all this stuff, let's just throw stuff at it. And then it's like, well, no one cares about these second string. Joe Public does not care about these B-list characters. And I'm a comic book fan, and I don't care about these B-list characters. But, well, we, I think you're forgetting that when we, when Marvel Studios first started their first phase, nobody cared much about those characters either. But it took it took a, it took a growth period of slowly getting to understand and slowly getting to get more access to those movies to be able to love those characters. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, which goes to I think what you're talking to is right now there's so many so much stuff that they're throwing at us. Um, I don't get to just look at one character and go, "Oh, I like this character because." Yeah, that's yeah. a shout. That's a shout. Um, you, you mentioned four or five of the Avengers, but now what am I looking at? I'm looking at twenty different, different characters, like between the Eternals, Ant Man, and Wasp that I'm still trying to hold on to. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with uh, Kate Bishop and her guy. What happened to what happened to Swordsman? What's going on with uh, Miss Marvel, uh, Kamala Khan? What's mm. going on with Captain Marvel? There's too many characters right now for me to focus any type of love on, to feel like like I'm. I got to understand which way the Marvel Universe is going. Lucas makes a great point. He absolutely makes a great point. And this ties into that. I think the overall strategy has gone a bit wonky. And they try to tie everything together like they do in the comic books. Why could, it, why could we not have just had, just for, just for the sake of the argument, we could have had, instead of having Ant and Wasp 3 or whatever it is, then leading into the Beyond uh, and Khan, and therefore that's how we get the X-Men. Why could we not just have the X-Men, boom, there's your X-Men movie, no explanation, no nothing, go straight into it, and then in the final bit, like in the teaser trailer, that's how it ties in. And then that would make people go, got it now. Because the X-Men are already a known commodity. People like the original X-Men movies. Well, apart from maybe, maybe apart from the third one, which I quite like still anyway. I don't understand why we have to be spoon fed all this. The amount of people who, who are going to the pictures will know who the X Men are, will know who the Fantastic Four are. Does it matter if they haven't been shown recently? Mm, you tell well, me. here's, I, I, and I, I hate jumping down this rabbit hole because I wanted to get to the, some of the comics, but um, the when we when and eventually we do get an X Men movie three or four more years down the line. Is it Jonathan Hickman's X-Men that we're getting? It's not going to be the X-Men from 20 years ago with Cyclops, Storm. It's not going to be Claremont's X-Men we're getting. We're going to be getting Hickman's X-Men, right? I bet, you, I bet you still get Wolverine. Oh, well, Wolverine's well, right. still part of Hickman's X-Men. But... Right. Well, and don't forget that we got X-Men 97, the animated series that's going to be coming out soon. So that'll give us a direction. Um, if people fall in love with that animated series and fall in love with those characters, and, okay, got it. Then they'll go with that. Um, and of course, I think what they'll do is they'll follow the direction of, because they'll have enough time to fix and follow the direction of, hey, do they want the old, old stuff? Or do they want in the more diversity, inclusive new stuff of Jonathan, Jonathan Hickman? Um, and that's and then when they make that determination, then they'll be able to do more of the live action stuff by just sprinkling them in and sprinkling them in in the current Marvel universe. I just think, I just think one of the problems for me about Sp the Spider Man trilogy, um, maybe not the third one so much. <clears throat> well, even so, the first one, he ends up being Tony Stark's assistant, and then you get the whole Spider Man suit, which I know. Happened in the comic books, so don't. I'll jump down my throat straight at the time. But I hate, I hate them. I hate the Spider-Man tech suits. Absolutely. Um, does Spider-Man need to be even part of the Avengers at that point? No, he doesn't. He's Spider-Man, the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. That's the that's right. the full right? right. But you, it's, you turn it into like, oh, Tony Stark, you know, is 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 now he's like his uncle, and 
it's like what and then it just doesn't work for me it doesn't work spider man spider man and i think by trying to smash the pieces together you actually lose something you lose something down the line yeah. and with when a character when you have to mash it together to get a character like spider-man to get people to go and see the movie then what hope have you got when you've got someone like ant-man or the wasp or the eternals i don't know any of my friends i don't know any of my non-comic book friends who went to see the eternals movie at all okay well, but they'll, but they'll go they'll go and watch they'll go and watch the avengers ones they've seen all the avengers ones but they won't go see eternals i didn't even go see the eternals movie so, so the, but that's that's my point that's what i'm trying to say yeah, yeah. But, but i mean i didn't think it was terrible when i started on disney plus but i didn't think it was great either so that's that, that's i think that's the problem with the latest face i didn't think anything was great so all right so <laughs> Let's table the MCU until we've actually seen Ant Man. God or, damn. Or, or, God or, damn. Lucas, <laughs> or Lucas and I have seen it. <laughs> so. Hey, I'm one hey, my wife loves the Ant Man movie, so you know, I'm not saying that I'm not saying I'm gonna get dragged there at all kicking or screaming, but you know. <laughs> all right. Let's let's jump into uh, some of the comics that came out this week. And uh, well was, we'll pull uh, Lucas has got Joe Fix It on the line. So let's talk Joe Fix It. Um let me get into my copy so I can get you the credit. So I get, yeah, I, the credit, I got him. I got him. Peter David. Yay. The artist is someone that uh, Johnny should pronounce. Yil Dere Sinar. Color artist is D Kuniff and letters by VC Zariana Mayer. If you don't like it, blame Michelle Marchese and will moss on edits let me just um, get my email ready now then <laughs> so um i wanted to talk about this book because I, I i think it's i think it bears mentioning that uh peter david who wrote this book had suffered a stroke within the last couple of weeks and um oh, another he, one he, he uh no is it the, the last couple of weeks this is the first one so right no, I'd say you had one a couple of years ago, a few years back. Oh no, this is well, this is just recently, a couple of weeks ago. He's in the okay. he was in the hospital last I knew, um, and hopefully recovering. Um, but I wanted to just kind of shout out a get well wish to Mr. David. Um, God bless, God bless. And this has been um, this has been the last uh, the last year or two. Peter David's uh, strong point coming back to Marvel is kind of playing in a sandbag box of old toys where he just kind of pulls out Maestro, does a couple of limited series, and then this is, you know, he's, he did a couple of Spider-Man ones, Black Costume Spider-Man. Um, so I like the, the kind of retro, <clears throat> retro back to my youth kind of revisitation of Joe Fix-It. Um, and I like it written by Peter David, who wrote all the original Joe Fix-It stories. Yeah. So <clears throat> this one actually ha has joe still working in vegas and the kingpin shows up which um i was like oh okay well they never did that in the in the in the, the original run i would have liked to see kingpin run up against joe fix it uh and of course here we get the gratuitous team up with spider-man i actually thought this book was pretty good it was it was interesting um it had spider-man and not really the Hulk kind of teaming up, but uh, Kingpin takes over or, or mind controls the Hulk, gasses him, and makes him attack Spider-Man. And that's basically the gist of the whole book. <laughs> so, so so what's the gas? Because I looked at this. I would think it's myself, a neurotoxin. Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. Neurotoxin, yeah. What, yeah. Mm. what Lucas said. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, because, I mean, if Kingpin had that back when this was a... Uh, Kind of knew it, so you'd think you'd use it a lot more against Daredevil and stuff. You would think, yeah, it was mm. kind of a surprise. It almost reminded me of you know, like the Penguins umbrellas back in the yeah. Silver Age, like psh, like a little gas. Yeah, but then you've got to think sooner or later they've got to got to explain that way so it doesn't affect the continuity down the line. And that's my problem with books like this. These, these are the kind of do you, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember? Um, the kind of Star Wars toys, the original first generation stuff. Yeah. Well, after, after the Empire Strikes Back, they created these things called mini rigs. 
and they were like little little vehicles that were kind of um, I remember those yeah. a little bit more affordable than like the big Millennium Falcon sets and yeah. stuff like that. And the premise behind the mini rigs was that these are things that could have existed just out the corner of your eye in a yeah. movie, but you just didn't see them quite right. Mm-hmm. That's what I think these comics are when you go back and do this sort of thing. The the mini rigs that don't affect the story in any shape, way, or form. It's a fun to play with, and then when you're finished with them, you put them back and put them wherever continuity you, you want to use from that point of view. Um, I will say one thing: page page two or three, when Spidey walks into the uh, into the, the Hulk's room, Joe Fix its room. Fishnets make it to the Marvel universe. <laughs> yes, <Yay>. woo. <laughs> <laughs> Check them pins out. Yeah. <laughs> Why those, please? <laughs> so, Lucas, what did you think of Joe Fix It? Good, big, dumb fun. Good, big, dumb fun. That's all they needed. They, this is the book that they needed. Um, it's not changing anything in the universe other than the fact that he's, like you said, he's got this neurotoxin that he can troll a whole Hulk with now. And that's it. I mean, in this book cost about three ninety nine, very cheap. Fortunately, had a little too many for covers. Um, Jet Mickey says, yeah, there was nothing new, big or new happening in this one, but it was just okay. Big that fun. Go with your luck, LCS. Pick up this, a bagel, and a cup of coffee, all for ten dollars. And you're straight. I mean, I like this one. I like it. I got fishnets. What more do you want? Yep, I, 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 fishnets are actually getting more expensive. It's tell great. About, tell it's me, great tell me about it. Do you not think I know this already? <laughs> I think it's a great uh, nostalgia piece, and I think uh, out of like I said, the last couple of years where we've been getting these books, um, I think this has been one of the best ones so far. Um, on top of everything that we've get, been getting from Spider-Man, and um, I would happy to see this book. I will say I am surprised that Kingpin doesn't know who Peter Parker is. Considering at the time Peter Parker's working for the Bugle, take loads of photos. I'm sure at this at this point period of time they'll have bumped bumped knuckles at some point. You know, in fact, yeah, has hasn't one was a Spider Man unmasked by the Kingpin at one point as as being Peter Parker, but cried it off somehow. I don't know. I maybe I'm maybe I'm mixing up my characters or stuff, but I would have thought. I mean, fair enough. Peter Parker's not like a, a huge celebrity in New York, but. You know who your reporters are, right? You know who your photo logs are. So, yeah, I mean, especially since I mean, Kingpin does have a long and storied history in Spider-Man's book. Mm. Um, and, you know, was a primarily a Spider-Man villain before he moved over to Daredevil. But um, um, I'm, yeah, you're right. I am not sure whether they have the altercation why Spider-Man's spider sense isn't tingling. Well, but I mean, there's, there's just continuity issues for me. I think Peter David's writing generally is is top notch. Um, I love it. I love his Star Trek stuff. I've said that before. Um, and so I find his, uh, I find this stuff kind of, uh, it's trying to recapture that flavor, isn't it, of the of the period? Yeah, um, and that's that's really kind of what I think. He, well, I mean, obviously that's what they're trying to do. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, but um, there you go. All right, let's take a quick break, and we'll be back, and uh, we'll keep on the Spider-Man theme. Uh, Let's check out.
All right, make sure to check out our sister show, The Definitive Crusade, all about DC Comics, starring that guy there, Johnny. And you'll have some DC movie news coming up. Yeah. Oh, movie news. Woo. Yeah, we're, ta we're taking a leaf out of this show. You know, we've got uh, movies to talk about for a change. Oh, yeah, I, I saw that. I saw that. I know, there's, a lot, there's a lot to talk about. Nobody cares about anything DC right now, other than I Har care. Hogwarts, <laughs> other than Hogwarts Legacy, the video game, which apparently is really, really good right now. Uh, yeah, no, no, <laughs> not not me, not me. No, I'm man. not a Harry no, Potter, not Harry Potter guy. All yeah. right, so <laughs> let's um let's jump into our next book, Johnny. That's not it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna talk Amazing Spider-Man, Johnny. Talk yes. to me about what's going on with Amazing Spider-Man and where the heck is John Romita Jr. So, well, he's taking a breather, isn't he? So, this is Amazing Spider-Man number nineteen, guest written by Joe Kelly, guest art by Terry Dodson, guest inks by Rachel Dodson. Joe Caramanga is still on the book, so that's good from VC. Um, this is how much Marvel trusts Spider-Man as a brand right now. They can't have an event book without having the X-Men in it. That's right. Uh, and on top of that, they have to have guest writers and guest artists. When the book is finally getting back to some fun elements with probably the introduction of Felicia Hardy back as a love interest. Um, why hand this off when you think to yourself, it's going to have some, pl some play down the line? I have no idea. But... For everybody who complains about how bad Zeb Wells is, and there are some people out there that complain about it, yes, I'm talking about you, Steve, at the Dial Knight, who doesn't raise me as a Spider-Man because you don't like Zeb Wells. Well, if you don't like Zeb Wells, you can always have Joe Kelly instead. See how that suits you. Hmm? <laughs> hmm? Really? Oh, shot hmm. across the bow, Joe yeah, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> You know what? This book was kind of... I was kind of okay with it, but there's a couple of things happened straight away. So, Felicia and Peter go on a, a date to a nice ski resort type thing. Turns out, <gasps> Gazooks, MJ and her partner are there at the exact same time. Who'd have thunk it? The city that never sleeps has just two couples who have to know each other go to the same place at the same weekend. <coughs> Yeah, oh, my, that's, a, that's a coincidence. Holy, holy contrivance, Batman. Exactly. This is just BS plotting. Come on, really? The dialogue between them isn't actually that bad. It's quite fun. Um, but then things get even worse by the introduction of a facsimile Sinister Six who then turn out to be trying to be the Sinister Six. Oh, man, it's like, which brain cell have we used for this storyline? On top of this, the White Rabbit has descended into some sort of Harley Quinn-esque character with all the madcap moments of going off and sleeping with a person mid-heist or mid-not-heist until it turns into a heist. And it's just, what is this book? Where has the, where has the tone of the previous issues gone? Not the dark web stuff. Box that off, put that somewhere else in your collection. I'm talking about the, the ongoing um, Zeb Wells stuff. Where's the tone gone? Where's the engagement? Where's the curiosity? This is just noise. It's noise on top of noise on top of noise. Thing is, chances are, I'm sorry to say, we're going to have to put up with it again for the second issue because mm -hmm. there's no way Zeb Wells is going to come into this and then sort it out, surely. This will be a two-issue gap whilst Wells and John Remy are get ready for the big reveal uh, of what happened to Spider-Man and Peter Parker in that missing six months. I don't know. Marvel not trusting the brand, whichever way it is, but Marvel are certainly not trusting the readers to sort of like stick with it. <laughs> don't give me half-assed Spider-Man stories at, at this cost. I want the real thing. Thank you very much. Peace out. <laughs> I have one question. Why did I pick this book? <laughs> where the hell are all the ninjas? <laughs> oh, the, cover, the cover black cat and spider-man are literally up to their waist in ninjas on the cover and there is uh -huh. nary a ninja to be found inside the well, book well I, what i got when i first looked at the book when they're taking on the the gang at the start i was like oh look they look like little ultrons what's that all about and then the, they're not even ultrons i'm like well, what 
<laughs> so Ninja's on the cover, Ultron's inside, there aren't Ultrons. Just honestly. Well I'd say that is worse. If you check on the interior cover, there's the little tag. These events take place after the Mary Jane and Black Cat miniseries. Well, and well, fair, there's no actual re reference from that in this. So this could have just been, you didn't have to say that, you could just poof, but still. So I'm, I'm going to gripe about this book a little bit, but I mean, it's Go just it. overall, and we've, we've said it before, right? So mm -hmm. we're 19 issues into this new Zeb Wells run of Amazing Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And and the big sell on to us was John Romita Jr. on the art. Mm -hmm. We've gotten about, what, 10 issues of actual that run and mm -hmm. another nine issues of events slash filler slash guest artists. Great. And I, I think that the, I mean, <clears throat> there was a, the big one, wasn't it? The celebratory issue, the 900 issue was a, yeah. was a guest artist gig. And I'm like, yep. what? Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the, the other thing I would say is um, Terry Dodson. I, I love his artwork, but I, I think he's more, um, I think he's more suited as a cover artist. Well, did anybody order any cheesecake? <laughs> I, I like my cover cheesecake. I yeah. don't, you know, when, when I'm flipping through the book, I mean, some of the stuff, there's there's a couple of panels in there that I'm just like, ah, he didn't spend as much time on that one as yeah. he did with the Black Cat. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know? So Mary Jane and Black Cat both look great. Peter looks great. Love the boxer shorts. There's a scene early on when they're fighting the ninja stroke, robot stroke, Ultrons whatever they are and there's a bit where there's she's kind of like he's punching the guy and she's kicking it there's just like a black line and i swear to god mm -hmm. i looked at this for a good like 15 minutes i was like what am i looking at here i don't get it i was like yeah. turning the book upside down i was like you know hold it to the paper to look from the reverse angle so like so light would shine through it and see finally <laughs> worked out it's supposed to be her ass and two legs i'm like really that, you know, <laughs> what it's so I, I get it i think I think Terry Dodds, I agree with you. He's very much a... Uh, he's a, he's a pin-up artist. Yeah, yeah. Cheesecake. Yeah. Bring, bring on the yeah. cheesecake. Um, yep. But, you know, the girls are great. And um, I just I just think... I mean, Joe Kelly, don't you guys... Wasn't Joe Kelly on the Hulk book that you liked? Um, Joe Without Kelly. Ewing. No? No. I think there's someone else? Okay. So, I mean, for me, I was just... This is just... I wish Marvel just ring, rang me up and said, "Machine, uh, we need a we need a two two issue Spider Man story, throw in the Black Cat, and uh, can you sort something out for it?" And I would have I would have knocked you up something that was far better than this. Yeah. Well, you <laughs> know, you you got well. It's not just Black Cat. It's it's Peter Parker with Black Cat and Mary Jane in this very issue, and we they've been building up towards this hot, steamy tea pop off triangle that could possibly happen and it was like eh eh mm. they kind of shrugged it off i was very disappointed in that look I, don't build me up and then freaking <laughs> shrug it off like eh eh and it's also that 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 nameless faceless husband that mary jane is walking around with right yeah she he seems all right with it and yet a couple of issues ago he was like threatening peter parker in the lift saying don't be hanging out with you know, I don't I mean, even know what his name is. What's okay. I'm like, I'd be that that storyline would be working much better for me if it was like Harry Osborne or something. Yeah. Um, would you be okay if your wife was out there hanging out with her ex husband drinking champagne in her bathroom? No, no, no. <laughs> you're a better, sure, you're I, better I, I man than me. I think better man than me. I think it's a website for that sort of stuff. <laughs> oh, there's there's quite a few. Johnny, it's called johnnyfishnet.com. Hey, there's no fishnets in, no fish in this book. That will not be appearing on my website. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, so 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 I mean, I don't. I know this is supposed to be a family show, right? But no, there's several ones that Marvel has been hitting this week. So fetishes just between the fishnets, tentacles. <laughs> Uh, furries, well, tentacles, furries, and I forget what was. Oh, tight leather, in this book. Um, they they had What's several the weird fetishes. <laughs> you can't. You gotta have like one per book. You can't throw them all in one freaking book. <laughs> you can't have furries, tentacles, oh, and black man, leather just, all in I've the just, same book, man. I've just got it. I've just got it. The new book from Marvel for just purely for adult uh, fetishes. It is bondage, Betty Brandt. 
how much of, how much alliteration can you have on one title? Well, that was my <laughs> my my favorite Jack Kirby Fourth World creation was the female furry. So that's my that's my kind of my favorite villains. Yeah. Is, did did it bother anybody but me that uh, Rabbit, whatever her name is, I forget what the White Rabbit, rabbit the White Rabbit is looking more and more like Harley Quinn every day. I just yeah. said that. You just I said that. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what? Like even the color of fleshes that they're fleshing her out with is purples and pinks and greens, just like Harley Quinn. Like, I don't, I don't understand. What and she's doing? not that big of a character anyway. She's <laughs> well, they were playing on doing a the list. They were planning on giving her her own picture at one point. See, I like I like her partner in crime, the one that saved Spider Man saves him and he saved. I like that little like buddy, like hero bad guy bromance thing we've got going on. I, that's interesting. I like that definitely. White Rabbit, yeah, she's just nameless. I could just you know, yeah, I could, I could live without a you know left, right, and center. Absolutely. I am uh, I am of the same mind. So, all right. So we have another dud in the uh, in this Amazing Spider-Man short for Zeb Wells' run. And it's to, Zeb Wells' file. They've got to sort it out soon because if they don't, um, you know, I'm uh, I, I might. This is going to look. This is going to go down as one of uh, those failed those failed uh, runs, right? And it's not. It's, you know what the problem is? It's it not is. Zeb Wells. Yeah. It's not. It's not Zeb Wells because you've got not his fault. He's not right. even on this book. Crossovers are mandated by the powers that be right so you kind of got to i mean we saw how bad his amazing spider-man run the beyond storyline went and that's all editorial stuff to to wind it down so we can relaunch it again since the yeah. relaunch that two it, stone so arc was if you're on. so this is this is my argument really is if you're going to give zeb wells the key to the kingdom so to speak right and say okay this is your run on amazing spider-man just let him go. Let him do yeah. what he's what he's gonna do. I mean, it's not like like I don't remember uh, Nick Spencer's run being uh, kind of jettisoned halfway through a storyline for a for a fill in or for a, an event, you know. I I like, <laughs> right, or Dan Slott's run. Dan, yeah. you know, I was, you know, just think like there's been there was a lot of good, great like great stories that were not interrupted mid story. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Yeah. It's yeah. it's not Zeb's fault, and I just want to you know he should be getting a fair shake here. Right. Definitely. Well, I, you know, you know, I I can appreciate like how we feel about the storyline and how they executed the stuff that's inside the book, but actually, in actuality, um, how it's been selling on the secondary market. I'm talking about on eBay, whatnot, and all this stuff has been fantastic. Even before the book came out, <laughs> it sold like around eight thousand copies. Really. Yeah, so eight thousand copies, um, because of one particular cover, and that's this one. It was just the Disney twenty three one hundred. I think I've shown this to you guys before. Yeah. Um, this is the second issue that Perez Noto um, has done. Um, there was the cover. There was the colored one that that actually had color, and then this one is the one one hundred um, that black and white. They need a one hundred, and it's sold out. In the meantime, the little ones, the smaller ones, the ones that weren't that were just one on one, they they're just selling like hotcakes for the right price. So there's there's not not going to be anybody to be able to say, well, it failed, and you can tell by the by the numbers. Nope, this is one of those variants of that. It meets the Spider Man, and it's selling really well. Yeah. But the problem with <clears throat> the problem with the secondary market is it doesn't do Marvel any favors. Marvel make their money by selling the comic books to the distributor to. Uh, then sell into the comic book shops or go into direct to the comic book shops. Comic book shop will then sell this comic at a high price because it's a variant or whatnot. It's the comic company, the, the comic book shop that makes the money there, not Marvel. Marvel. No, so, so, so the way it works, so, as I understood it, if you have like a one in 1,000, it means that if you buy a 1,000 copies of this book, we'll give you this cover. And then companies then say, great, cool. I'll sell my 1,000 copies of whatever book it is for regular price and i'll sell the one in one thousand for a thousand dollars and there you go i've made my money all right so so well so so th think for a, for a moment that this one and i know for a fact because the the cover was actually absolute shite right uh so a book like this cost somebody said it the british way <laughs> yeah uh somebody i i know for a fact that a cover like this cost them 35 cents to make 
they didn't sell it to a retailer like me for two bucks. That's for each one. Mm -hmm. So off off the bat, they're making their little, I would say probably like a 180 after a distribution and all that other stuff. So they're making the dollar 80 off of that. Then I got to remember, just in order to get that from me, they're getting at least because I got to buy a hundred of these, right? So they're making at least what a hundred and eighty bucks off of me just so I can make this, right? Mm -hmm. So and and so in order and then okay, so I'm sitting on mine, right? It's costing me say two hundred and fifty bucks to get this after shipping and handling, right? Uh -huh. And then I've got to double my price in order to make any type of type of money back. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, Mar Marvel and Penguin Random House they're just sitting off freaking counting their freaking bills. Yeah, no, you know they're they're at least they're not as uh, heinous as Diamond because Highness charges their retailers out the yin yang for shipping and handling and all this stuff, mm -hmm. whereas PRH they're mostly free. Um, but man, it's yeah they're they they trust me they they made good money off of this book. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the point. I mean, the fact is that because you get this as a variant, you have to get X amount of copies to get this. They're making the money off of you, and then you're using the variant um, to sell at a higher price to reclaw some of that money back, especially if, for example, the comic that you've had to buy 100 copies from doesn't sell 100 copies. Yes. Yeah, because you, what you've got to do is you end up with a backlog of, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 15 in your, in your, in your yeah. backlog bin because... <laughs> oh. And a, and a dollar pop now because you've had to reduce the price because no one's buying it, for example. Yes. But hey, as long as you sell that one for $100, it doesn't always necessitate. And the secondary market, things like eBay and stuff like that, that's even worse because, Lucas, you don't make any money off that. If you sell this book to right. me and then I put this back on eBay, I'm making the money, not you, depending on yes. as, that, as that growth and that speculation grows and grows and grows. Yeah. So there is a there are a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> we talked about fetish earlier, so apologies for this joke. There are a lot of fingers in a lot of pies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. No. But all right. So yeah, when I, I'll go. I'll I'd jump down that retailer uh, rabbit hole too and see what. Uh, like uh, now, um, Lucas, are the are the retailers putting those variant books on eBay to try to? It's sold already. Uh, it's already sold in store. They, you know, so when I'm saying they sold, that means the retailers already started putting out their theirs, and they sold out. So if you see them out there on the web page, those are the secondary sales. Like, hey, I got it from this retailer. Now I'm putting it back out. Um, like the the first one, it was already selling for 200 to 250. This one is selling for like 166 out, out there right now, um, and that's not including so the uh, the regular one, the regular color one, right? Um, even though I would have thought by the time everybody got their stuff out, you know, um, it wouldn't have sold as much. I got a freaking email last night. I sold 18 of the colored ones. Huh. That's, that's, that's crazy. Like I can, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, Hey, I sold it to different people. One guy bought 18 of these for me. Wow. Right. So people are still going crazy for these covers. People love these covers. Don't know. Huh. Well, yeah, okay. I, I, you guys know way more about the retail stuff than, than I do. Well, years years ago, <laughs> uh, I used to have a little little comic book back in the late eighties, early nineties. I had a little comic book shop called Underground Comics, um, and we worked um, out with Diamond Publishing. So I kind of got into the whole, you know, how much a, a regular comic book costs versus what you sell it for and stuff. So. The pro the market hasn't changed that dramatically. Um, <laughs> although of course the variant covers are huge. Yeah, they're huge. Right. Yeah. All right. So uh Lucas, take us through uh the John Ridley's penultimate issue of Black Panther. You know how much I hate the way they've been treating Black Panther and making oh. it yeah, it's just been freaking absolutely heinous. But you know what? This actually wasn't bad. It's been a slow buildup, whereas uh, they made Black Panther an outcast um, because of the crazy stuff he was doing. Like he had a intelligence agency that operated outside of Wakanda, and the actions that they did kind of messed things up at home. 
Um, and every time he tried to fix it, it just made it worse and worse. Um, so the political entity inside of Wakanda decided to, you know what, we're tired of you. You're, you're we kicked you out. You're no longer king. Um, and that that's whatever. Now they've got their other just other little fight that's happening, and they say, okay, you can still help us out, but you got to pair up with Namor. Of course, that's his his, his sworn enemy. Uh, it is. And the little snide comments from Namor, as well as the people that are still inside of Wakanda, are absolutely amazing and funny. They're, they're well, I, I would say they're they're cutting. Like if somebody said that to me, okay, we got we got to fight. We got we gonna have to fight right here because you're just not gonna freaking you know put me out in front, of, especially in front of Captain America. You ain't gonna just say all types of crazy stuff in front of me. You could have you could have pulled me to the side, um, but yet. Yeah, the the crazy stuff the the little infights between Namor and Black Panther were, felt right the way that his own country is treating uh, Black Panther felt right um, the the way the position that Shuri is in right now where she's 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 not outcast but she still has to uh, you know make sure that Wakanda is good felt right all the elements that he put in here that that say your actions have repercussions to me was was absolutely amazing um i what here's here's what i don't like i still feel like the art for black panther is off um and and i've argued with a lot of people who don't understand um africans we don't look like this uh we don't we don't we don't we're not as light skinned we don't have crazy type of hairstyles like this you might want to fix fix this but and i get it it's this is for African American and American audiences, but just I mean, give give me one actual African looking person. Give give me give me at least one, um, and that's twice over by the fact that there's a the character in here called Buffalo Soldier, in here, which is an African American thing, right? But still a lot of missing African elements to this, especially for something that's supposed to be the pinnacle of African content. Um, so. Um, I love the direction we're to get going with this. I don't like the art. I, I, I think they need to push more African stuff in here um, because I would love to be able to give Black Panther to my kids and say, hey, this is an African King comic book, but they're not going to find anything African actually in there. They're going to find some of the old weird stuff, and they're not going to get any closer to, to their African culture. Um, but you know what? I'm fine with that as long as the story actually made made sense to me. What did you guys think? If you guys read it, I don't know. No, I did. I did read it. I thought that um, I, I think John Ridley's run, the last 14 issues, has been pretty good. Um, I it, it kind of was a slow burn a little bit, like like exactly what's going on with with Black Panther stepping down from from uh, from being king, and then all of a sudden turning into almost they look at it, look at it as a betrayal right and yeah. then now they they they're kicking him out of the country altogether they're kind of um, ostracizing him so um i enjoyed to see, I, I like to see how it wraps up um i didn't really like the previous issues um confrontation between t'challa and captain america where it just looked like captain america beat the piss out of him <laughs> and i didn't I didn't enjoy that, but um, I like this. I, I like the whole run. I'm kind of. I didn't know Ridley's run was coming to an end so quickly. So, um, I guess it'll, it's going to be another direction in a couple of months. But I do like the uh, the long term animosity between Namor and T'Challa. I think that's actually. Um, I like that in continuity because I mean that's harkens back to uh, to Hickman's run of Avengers, and. Um, I, I, I enjoy it, and I think Namor's appearance here is timely because of the Black Panther movie a couple months ago. So um, it's it's interesting. It's good. I like it. Johnny? <clears throat> I have been reading this, um, so I looked at this book this morning, and I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> like, that said, that said, John Ridley. This is the same John Ridley who's on the new Batman book, right? I don't know. Well, is yeah. John really the one that does? John Ridley is the one. I, I don't. That, didn't yeah, he I, direct Wakanda Forever? 
No, I'm sure this is John Ridley that that writes uh, the the Batman book that uh, replaced um, Bruce Wayne with uh, Jace Fox, also known as Tim Fox for those. Yeah, I'm right. Absolutely right. Um, so I will say that this book reads a damn sight better than his Batman book because his Batman book is a tosh. I don't know anybody who's buying that Batman book at all. So, um, so there you go. I didn't mind the art. I thought the art was all right. I had questions as to why the Avengers are in this when, you know, <laughs> the Avengers aren't even in their own book. It depends which Avengers you're reading as to who's in the team. It's just crazy. So, um, I like the idea of what they're trying to do, the world building element, the kind of how it interacts together. I think if I'd been reading this from the get go, I would have enjoyed it because it is that kind of slow boiler that I like rather than just like a wham bam slam sort of stuff that we see a lot of. Um, the app for the most part, I say I did enjoy. Some of the characters were a bit off. Um, I think Captain Marvel wasn't drawn particularly well, but she's in cameo. She doesn't do a great deal in this book. Um, as for the rest, yeah, it, there you go. The, I'm glad that, that somebody's uh, enjoying the book. Yeah. 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 This is the this is the director that wrote this. The director for What Kind of Forever and John, 12, in Twelve Years a Slave. And, John Ridley, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if he's the same guy that wrote Bat, wrote your Batman. Uh, he is. It has to be, right? It is. It is. That's the that was the big hook for having John Ridley on Batman. He was gonna gonna show Batman as a diverse character, uh, of having an African American Batman. Who better to write to than John Ridley, the guy that wrote? Oof. And that, that's it. It's the same guy. Okay. No, interesting stuff. So, yeah, I, I think that this Black Panther run, I think uh, this run was much stronger than uh, Tina Hesey Coates' last uh, last run. I think it was a, kind of was a last gasp on that book. I think, I, I think by having John Ridley write, it shows a level of authenticity that you don't get in the Batman book. Because a lot of people, for... No matter what you say, no matter what you do, no matter what you're going to do in the future, Batman will always be Bruce Wayne to a whole load of people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just the same way that Carl L will be Superman. That's not to say you can't have an African American Superman. Of course you can. You know, lots of planets have diverse cultures on them. You know, but for the last 80 odd years, Carl L has been Superman. And you're going to have a hard push to push to change that opinion for a lot of people. Very true. All right, that's going to do it for the books. Let's uh, let's jump into our two minute warning. It's a two minute warning. Woo! <laughs> uh, one, of my <laughs> one of my favorite bits of the whole show, to be honest. All right, okay. this is Avengers Forever number fifteen. The hell? One, yes. So if you squint your eyes and turn your head a certain way, it tells you who's going to win the Super Bowl tomorrow. <laughs> if you sit there and stare at it, it'll just it'll come together into a can, big yeah angle. yeah. <laughs> uh don't forget hey we've got these villains by alex ross coming out you can actually get uh signed copies on alex ross's website Ooh, good tip good tip yeah. um dark weather uh, spider-man number 18 this is the second print but they've why, already why are people buying the first print in the first print? i don't know but they they're he's already depowered so this is kind of uh non-relevant already uh, mm -hmm. uh scarlet witch number two it looks like they're trying to bring uh viv vision back didn't that issue already come out uh did it me i already out? i read it i read it last week uh let's see god i could have sworn i don't know maybe well we're gonna have to bring vision up. You got to bring Vision back because he's a new Avengers book. Very true. Yeah. Uh, one Vision, Scarlet Witch, like David Nakayama, more of those Marvel Vision. Uh, Alex, Alex Ross, Fantastic Four. I love the covers on that book, but the book is terrible inside. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, coming out soon, Dark Tiger Division. And Peach Momoko. I can't see the, the the allure of Peach Momoko. She does a ton of covers. She has a couple of these books that are coming out. I just don't see what, what does everybody love about her artwork. I just 
if you're in a, see it. If, if you're in a tattoos, you love her artwork. And is that power pack? <laughs> yes. Yay! <laughs> Bring back the pack. All right. So where it gets interesting is there have been rumored. I'm not sure if this has been confirmed, but they are planning on doing something with Power Pack. So, Extreme X Men, the Kitty Design variant. Not sure. I forget who this. This must be uh, Enyuk Lee. Uh, I think this one is already is was already on FOC, but it's coming out soon. The Wakanda Second Print, number four. Um, that number four had the first appearance of a new character called Kimmy, or Kimmy. Is she on the cover there? Is that the uh, is that yes. the one with the energy thingies going on? Yeah, that's Kimmy. What kind? That so is that Wakanda Forever number four? Yep. Mm -hmm. I didn't see her in that book. All right. Anyway, I I probably just skimmed through it anyway. As you should. <laughs> um, Joe, fix it. <clears throat> it's on FOC. That's a pretty cool cover. Alex Ross's villains are awesome, and I really want the uh, the spread of all the all the villains together. Uh, and it's Jeff. That's also on FOC. Um, is that an actual book coming out, or is that the digital? Because that's an actual on... book. It's an actual book. Oh, for Christ's sakes! What are we doing, Marvel? <laughs> coming soon. Extreme X Men. Number three. Strange Academy Finals. That's a good book. More design variant stuff. Captain, Mar yes. Captain Marvel Momoko. Cap well, uh, not the, the Momoko one, but just Captain Marvel generally. Absolutely loving this storyline with the brood. Mm. Uh, Greg Land with her and brood. Land is having a bit of a renaissance, isn't he, Johnny? He is. That, and that, that's not... You'd expect something a little bit more salacious from uh, Lang, but I think that that's toned down brilliantly. I do think the sash is the one where, oh, no, yeah, the sash needs to be changed. But other than that, yep, yeah, I like Greg Land. He's doing well on, uh, isn't he on an Avengers book? Is it Avengers for the Avengers, everyone? The, uh, no, the uh, all-out Avengers book. That's He's right. That's right. Yeah. But, yeah, like me some Land. Of course, Fantastic Four, Venom. Apparently, he's going up against Red Goblin. Marvel Voices, Wakanda Forever. Red Goblin hey, is look. actually hey, Venom's sidekick. Hey, look, it's Batman. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, I Marvel Voices. I thought it was Dark Hawk. <laughs> um, Star Wars cool. Black History Month, number 31. That's a good cover. I do like that cover. Another Black History Month by Menahini. More Fantastic Four, Invisible Iron Man, Star Wars 31, X Men number 19. That's the old Laura, isn't it? The yeah. One that came yeah. out of the, the August one. She's got the yeah. little bit of a rogue streak going in her hair. Yeah. yeah. Well, because that's to differentiate it from the current Laura that's still also kicking around, I suppose. But yeah. yeah. Uh, Avengers Forever. Um, that's the. I think this might be the first cover appearance of that Doom Planet, the Doom Planet above all. Mm. This that one in twenty five. Go back one to the one in twenty five. Is that we've looked at that before? Is that the Force Works cover? That's Force Works. Yeah. yeah. I didn't mind Force Works, you know. It was, it was of its time, Johnny, as we say. On the <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should do it on all timers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for, force works. We might be. We might be uh, at the times. The timeline there. Yeah. Uh, Vendor Forever number fourteen. The Howard the Duck. <clears throat> Do people still care about the duck? No. But I don't like how fun. the duck in uh, small doses. Small doses. Yeah, well, he's all over the place. Oh, what a horrible cover that whole cover is. Yeah, well, there's some definitely terrible, absolute terrible ones. Marwell Moon Knight, Hots, and closing out with Nightcrawlers. Hmm. 
And that's that's close it out with that. And that was your two minute warning. All right. There you go. All right. Well, looking forward to some of those books in the, over the next couple of weeks. And uh, good luck in the Super Bowl tomorrow, Lucas. I know you're starting. I, look, 80 wings. That's what I'm going for. I'm trying to eat 80 wings, 10 beers. That's what I'm going for. That's that's. I don't care about the game, really. I don't care about how much I can get in and how much I can drink. <laughs> well, oh, start, start early. Start now. Start now, Lucas. I've got I've got dogs. I've got I've got I've got dogs going on. Very much. So for you guys, right? So it's all right for you. For me, it starts at half past eleven tomorrow night. Right. Oh. So so oh. like I could come like half half past midnight, quarter to one there, I'll be eating my cheese dogs and my nachos and stuff. Not good for the old diet, but do you uh, so. you banging out of work on Monday? Oh, I've, I've booked a day. <laughs> I booked a day off the start of the season. The Dolphins oh, when I was go. like, "Yay, booked, I'm going to the Super Bowl!" Yeah, I booked the day off. <laughs> All right. And my then. wife was like, "Your team didn't make the Super Bowl. You still take the day off?" I was like, "Hell's yeah, definitely bollocks to that." It's a team. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, be sure uh, to check out our next episode of No Prize Podcast, where we will have Disney Plus stuff to talk about and MCU stuff to talk about and maybe some comics. So until then, everyone be safe. <laughs>